Did you know that the Norwegian settlement is actually vaccinated with six or seven vaccines? Out of the 109 fish farms in Singapore, only two or three fish farms actually vaccinate some of their fish. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Singh. I'm a fish microbiologist. I study fish diseases such that I can develop vaccines to protect the fish against these diseases. Fish health is of top priority in fish farming. Basically, it causes losses up to $6 billion annually. My role in this is actually to make fish vaccines so that I can protect the fish from small so that they grow into market size and then can be later consumed. The vaccination is a way to prevent the onset of the disease. In the European countries, vaccination has been going for many, many years. Whereas in the Asian context, it's still in the infancy. Way back in 2012, when I first visited the farm, which is called Baramandi Asia, I could see that a lot of dead fishes were floating on the surface and lots of uneaten food. Uh, upon a further examination of the fish itself through autopsy, I could see that the fish mouth was actually eaten up already. The fish at Baramandi Asia was actually infected by this bacteria called Tenasi Baculum maritimum, in short called Tiba. So this leads to the fish not being able to eat anymore. That contributes to the mortality. The farmers told me that about 80 to 90% of the fish actually dies from this kind of disease. So what I'm doing now is drawing blood from the fish to check whether the fish has antibodies against certain diseases or after vaccination, do they have these antibodies being generated against the vaccine that we have given it to the fish. So after taking back the samples, basically what we do is to isolate the pathogen first. Then we do identification using the polymerase chain reaction, in short PCR, followed by sequencing. Once we know the identity of the pathogen, then we grow them in a flask and try to develop the prototype vaccine. Once the prototype vaccine is completed, we then deploy it to the fish to test whether it works or not. So actually the whole process that I do is actually similar to vaccine development for humans as well. From my experience, different farms have different diseases that affect different fishes. So you have to have customized vaccines for this. And the customized vaccines are called autogenous vaccines. Upon deployment of the Tima vaccine at the BA farm, we found that initially the mortality was about 80 to 90%, but after vaccination, we have only about 5 to 10%. So that is a great success. There are two main reasons for this emergence of diseases. Asia actually uses these antibiotics to treat rather than to prevent infection. Pathogens have gained resistance to this kind of drugs. Antimicrobial resistance actually arises from the misuse of antibiotics, especially in the Asian aquaculture setting. Climate change causes warmer waters, and in doing so, it increases the bacteria and viruses to grow much faster, and then they can infect the fish much more readily, causing higher mortality. So when fish get vaccinated, there's an increase in survival rate, leading to a higher profitability and then more regular supply of fish for the consumers. Asia is the largest producer and consumer of seafood, whereas in the European countries, they usually have less types of fish to eat. Because of this, it's very hard to have one vaccine that fits all types of fish. That's where the autogenous vaccines come in. Aquaculture is a growing business in this region. Hence, we need to put fish health as a top priority to ensure sustainable seafood production.